Спасибо. И мы начинаем. Блокнотика нет. Да. Раз, 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 раз. А, а, вот, все отлично, спасибо. Добрый день, добрый день, дорогие друзья. Good afternoon. I'm very happy to welcome you at this session. We decided uh, to call it non-profit organizations and business. Uh, it's a tandem that accelerate uh, our social problem resolution. Sorry for the microphone. So I'm going to use a traditional method of holding the microphone. So once again, good afternoon. I'm very happy to welcome you at this session. It's going to be about partnerships uh, between non-profit organizations and businesses. So we're going to look into this tandem, how it can be set up, how it can be developed, and how it can resolve social problems. I hope that this problem resolution can be very effective. And uh, I have to say that the partnership between non-profit organizations and business have been on the agenda for 20 years. It has been discussed widely, both in this country and uh, abroad. I have to say that this is the fourth session on this forum only. So we're trying to look at such important concepts uh, uh, from different angles. And we called it a tandem in order to emphasize that uh, there is a joint movement movements that's going in the same direction. So why are we interested in this subject? Why do we raise these uh, questions? Probably there is no one single answer because we are trying to find new formats, new ideas, new business cases, trying to make conclusions how it all works in order to get inspired. So we see more and more organizations uh, uh, both all the new non-profit organizations and business organizations that are trying to find points of interaction and uh, uh, improve their partnership uh, network. So there are new practices, rules of game change. We can learn a lot from uh, the experience accumulated all over the world. And this is what we're going to talk about uh, at this session. I hope that uh, We'll have some more participants that are going to join us shortly. Uh, and uh, they uh, um, are still at the previous session and discussing this uh, subject from uh, the business perspective. And we agreed with organizers that we're going to talk about partnerships in particular. And we're going to speak about partnerships and uh, work of partnerships that can bring positive changes. So this is something that we are aspiring towards when we set up our nonprofit organizations, when we develop our strategy for corporate responsibility in order to make changes, social changes in particular, so that the life could become better, happier, more interesting and more comfortable. And uh, actually, we are at the site uh, where different discussions about happiness and well-being takes place. So it's great uh, to be here and to continue uh, in the same vein. So what are the criteria that uh, can be used in order to understand whether the partnership is effective uh, for all uh, parties? Hopefully, we'll be able to come up with some ideas, formats, and models that you can take with yourself so that you could disseminate these practices, these best practices that we uh, already have in this country. And uh, I have to say that we have a lot of successful examples, and we we can grow uh, the practices and improve them even further. So we agreed with panelists that we are not going to give uh, reports and uh, formal presentations uh, about all the good things and achievements uh, uh, that uh, uh, we got. Uh, we are going to talk about different 
uh, criteria, effects and reasons for success. And I would like to introduce uh, our uh, panelists, Dan Palata, an entrepreneur and uh, the author of a bestseller uh, uh, that is well known uh, all over the world. Uh, it's about uh, uncharitable. Uh, ch then. Uh, uh, Svetlana, who is um, who represents uh, Norilsk uh, Nickel, Daria Buyanova, director of fundraising, uh, charity foundation, uh, Kind City, St. Petersburg, Natalia Nikitina, general director of uh, Kolomna Center of um, uh, Tourism. Uh, then. Uh, we are having Andrei Androsov, the deputy director of Center supporting innovations in society called Sol, and finally Anna Incheska, the director of the Charity Foundation. So let's um, get to know each other. We have introduced ourselves, and now I would like to ask everybody who is sitting here, please raise your hand if you represent non-profit organization. Great, thank you. If you represent business organization, please raise your hand. Okay, some partners for us. Are there any representatives of the state authorities? Okay, it's clear. It's nice to see you. Now, my next question. Do you have some experience of partnerships? I mean real partnership, not just interaction or getting uh, some uh, funding partnership. Okay, it's good. Can you qualify uh, your partnership uh, as a systematic uh, work aimed at social changes? Okay, it's great. So you'll be able uh, to take an active part in our discussion. It's great. You can raise your hand at any point, and please don't hesitate uh, to participate in our discussion. But now I would like to ask uh, mm, all our panelists to make uh, some uh, comments. So I'd love to start with non-profit organizations, and I would like to ask you a simple question. Can you please uh, identify two reasons or two uh, specific uh, examples of uh, projects, uh, of successful projects aimed at social changes. Who is the bravest? Okay, Natalia, you can start. I have been nurturing this idea for several years, and uh, I uh, can say that partners should have the same values as you do. So they should share the mission of the organization that you lead. You should, they, they should share the objectives and goals. And if we have the same goals and objectives, it works all very well because we can collaborate together. But if I have to explain every time what you should do, what you shouldn't do, what's good and what's bad, it creates big obstacles and barriers and impedes the process. I guess it's true about any union, take a family or any other thing. This will help you work effectively. Natalia, can I ask you, do you mean the, the val that the values of business organization and non-profit organization are the same? You know, it... Uh, uh, depends on the project and in our key, in our example in our uh, context uh, we uh, implement projects that have social goals to develop the area where we live to give jobs to the people living in these regions so we are doing something and attract partners naturally so you unite your forces because you have similar values. Well, our activity is very straightforward and people that come to us, they understand uh, how we can work together. There were some examples uh, uh, 
in my work uh, uh, when people came and wanted to join us at first but then they would uh, withdraw from the project because they didn't see PR, enough uh, PR or they didn't uh, uh, get uh, enough profit. Daria, what do you think? You know, we were getting ready uh, carefully and I have to explain why I'm here. In the last five years, our foundation, Kind City, St. Petersburg, actually involves 150 uh, towns and villages that uh, um, uh, are located all over Russia. And we um, work together with uh, 1,500 people when we, uh, and we launch the projects together. So uh, it, um, we provide training about collaboration, about corporate volunteering. For example, we develop a project with for with 150 volunteers and we did survey as to how they work with the nonprofit organizations so uh, I can say that uh, we worked with 3,000 companies and specialists and uh, we wanted to sum up all our results to see what happens in the regions because I can uh, um, uh, say that on the one hand we are in a foundation because we develop programs but on the other hand we are an infrastructure foundation because we develop uh, the network of cooperation so I'm from st. Petersburg and I can feel that we are in Moscow and it's more advanced so there is some space for us to grow uh, and yes we sometimes call ourselves the second capital and uh, um, still uh, there's a lot of things to learn so what do we see as partnerships and i actually made some notes for myself to be brief so first of all um, what can i say about sustainability and effectiveness of partnerships it's important to be free uh, uh, you know we sometimes get used to very linear model when business uh, as work uh, acts as a donor and gives money to non-profit and then there are some beneficiaries that get uh, uh, some benefits so it's very linear model but at the moment uh, uh, we can see that regional companies position differently. They say we support uh, volunteering projects uh, and dif uh, dif different initiatives uh, in education, sports and other things. So we sometimes think that, uh, uh, you know, in the regions uh, um, they don't have much, uh, nothing much happens in the regions. Uh, but maybe they uh, want uh, their management uh, uh, part and uh, be located in the capital cities, but then it seems like the uh, program is imposed uh, from the top. But, uh, you know, uh, anyway, it uh, uh, leads to partnerships, a very wide network of partnerships, and we have great examples of a small and big business. So there is no pure um, uh, form, there are more hybrid forms of interaction. When there are some initiatives appear, corporate uh, volunteers start uh, uh, getting fundraising and implement their own projects. So this is one point that I wanted to make, and uh, the second point uh, um, for my, it's, I really like it uh, being a millennial. So when I described that linear model, it was very clear uh, which uh, company um, is where. Uh, for example, companies give money and what else can they give? But now it's uh, uh, different. It's uh, the other way around. And maybe my colleagues will illustrate my point uh, with their example. So at the moment, you know, it feels like there's a big sack and everybody Everybody uh, makes their own contribution, so all the um, roles uh, begin to wash out, so you don't have to uh, be very specific. Uh, 
Uh, for example, sometimes non-profit organizations help uh, big uh, corporations develop uh, volunteering uh, initiatives and uh, raise funds. Then business sometimes says, we know how to develop the region, and uh, then they become uh, experts instead of non-profit organization that usually takes a role of expert. And uh, uh, actually, um, uh, this book uh, written by Dan Palata and Charitable inspired us. So it's great to see uh, this hybrid form of partnerships that really creates sustainable changes. And one other example that I wanted to share, it will be my final point that illustrated. Uh, we were working uh, uh, on a project uh, with GTI in St. Petersburg, so we asked the beneficiaries of this program. They were retired people, so we were supposed to help them. So uh, we asked them, and 90% uh, of people said, uh, we'd love to help uh, somebody, and 34% wanted to develop that program in particular. So um, this roles uh, uh, changed. You know, we sometimes speak about ownership uh, and sustainability uh, and um you know, uh, it's impossible if beneficiaries are not deeply involved into this process. S and sometimes uh, beneficiaries become the donors. So this um, uh, flexibility generates more sustainable patterns, and it's a great drive. So it's good. it would be good to see how we could work together later. In my list, uh, these are general values, um, uh, so um, um, attitude to partnership uh, as, uh, uh, you know, different activities with different roles um, and um, also uh, joint um, creativity uh, with the developing of this different future. Andre, I think now you can add also what other, what other things can be here in partnerships. Uh, uh, please. Um, uh, speaking about values, uh, I can agree with this coincidence of values, but um, I can expand. These are not only about values, so this is why w what the company exists for. Each company has its mission, and this mission never includes uh, only to earn uh, as much money as you can. Uh, there is always um, other, there are all also other values, and we do this always with non-profit um, organizations. Uh, but I think uh, it's not maybe even in one sentence that you should work with this with top management and they uh, have to have this mission of the company and in this case it, it's um, getting clear that this is not only about money but about some also social aspects. Um, and here of course uh, there are a lot of stakeholders uh, and business uh, is never in, in, in vacuum. It has relations with um, employees, um, with regions um, and social projects. Um, I uh, well uh, fit in uh, in this uh, part uh, and they help us uh, to work with um, uh, people uh, for example we have some 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 instances when projects like Baba Dieda, uh, they expand uh, uh, the um, uh, so uh, auditorium uh, also for corporate customers uh, so now also corporate customers uh, participate uh, in uh, 50 plus uh, and for business um, uh, this is a very good uh, uh, people uh, group of people so here you can see synergy uh, so regarding the partnership this is also mutual mutually um, uh, profitable relations business is not like um, a donor for us uh, it's an interesting stakeholder who helps us also we have a lot of projects um, we can see now a lot of projects uh, which uh, have long-term partnerships and they exist for long-term partnerships. We invest into mostly educational uh, projects and they have a lot of such uh, projects. <coughs> for example, colleges, um, IT hub, and they um, uh, train specialists for companies and we uh, are an educational project and we see them as social. They change people 
and they help people uh, to do what they really want. These projects are social, but still they solve business tasks. Or, for example, the project Smart um, uh, Course, uh, and here uh, awareness of teenagers uh, is increasing. They also they, they have in this course a lot of corporate customers. So they build relations when corporations are ready to pay because they understand this value uh, that, um, uh, for example, in Mona City, Smart Course works with all teachers teachers work with teenagers in a new way and teenagers uh, have um, uh, higher awareness um, and uh, teenagers uh, express themselves better so if we build up the structure properly and together with mentors teenagers um, will uh, be better prepared uh, will be better off um, for the life um, and uh, for me, <clears throat> this is much uh, wider. Uh, this also is linked to the mission of the company and uh, with target audience. Now, uh, regarding criteria, so what uh, do we need uh, for business? Uh, it's important to understand that uh, <clears throat> partnership, <clears throat> social, Projects. So this is usually not short term, uh, not for quick money. Mm, this uh, is uh, for um, only long term strategies because only there we can see social aspect in long term projects. There are quite a lot of uh, projects at the market. Uh, just recently, uh, when uh, uh, so. Uh, Megaphone also has had a partnership, and this partnership can really uh, uh, change uh, this system of lost people, for example. And if we look uh, at how we see social sphere, so for us uh, the most important uh, is that um, the social sphere uh, should have a social entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship uh, attitude is important. And when social project uh, is not a receiver of uh, means, because it asked uh, for this, but because it earns it um, and uh, it makes it professional, uh, with professional marketing, financial department, and business is, uh, is uh, here. But on the basis, uh, still, uh, this organization is created to solve um, social um, aspects. Uh, okay, we have some other colleagues. Uh, <coughs> also, dear colleagues in the uh, audience, uh, please also listen to us. Uh, Natalia and Dasha, do you have some other comments uh, you would like to add? Because then maybe there uh, can be also some uh, uh, feedback um, from the audience um, and uh, Andrew spoke about mutual relationships uh, long-term partnerships is important especially regarding the projects and social uh, spheres uh, and not just partnership projects and also creating uh, so as a result of this partnership creating of new uh, sustainable institutes uh, and concepts um, which work as a result of this partnership and also maybe financially sustainable. Natasha, can you add something? When we started work um, uh, 10 years ago in Kolomna, a region near Moscow, we did not have any partners. Uh, we started this because we wanted to do this. We were eager to do this. Um, and um, only uh, several years um, later, uh, we had um, good partners. Um, so we... Um, uh, we did not have this business part at the beginning, but then we had it. Uh, we grew, so to say, business part. We did not want to be dependent on the government uh, because government never helped us, never supported us at this moment. Uh, we did not uh, want to be dependent on, fun, on funds. We started to produce our products themselves um, to support ourselves and to invest into other projects. And when uh, I'm invited, um, non-profit organizations or business, I never know where I am. Okay, but regarding partnership, um, uh, so for example, from non-profit point of view, um, so from non-profit point of view, uh, should you have some unique uh, uh, resources um, besides competencies? Um, or what, what else do you, should you have when you have partnership with business? Okay, unique resources. Uh, for example, you grew this part, uh, business part. Uh, you um, 
uh, and this business part now um, gives you an opportunity um, to run risks and so on. Yes, uh, and we uh, do make such projects uh, uh, which are non-profit. Uh, we understand that this, uh, just we do them because we like it. We want to make um, everybody happy. Okay, uh, Svetlana. Uh, okay, five uh, comments. Uh, the first comment about the uh, illustration of these hybrid forms, uh, where the organization does not understand whether it's non-profit or, uh, or um, business organization. A business supports uh, what is profitable. And this is also about different roles. Uh, and sometimes non-profit even helps business uh, to sell uh, goods of business. Because, for example, a non-profit organization can give an access uh, of bu to business to someone. And also, uh, so it, it all, all works um, if um, we have quite um, you know, um, non-profit organization and business, uh, they think um, not only about one particular project um, or social entrepreneurship, but if they still have mutual interest, if they want to develop, uh, to increase um, the uh, standard of life, um, this is much uh, better. And also long-term partnerships, businesses uh, which, uh, um, you know, are in this um, long-term partnerships, uh, they uh, become joint ventures practically with non-profit organizations. And also, uh, we need to understand what we reached. Um, and also, it's important uh, so uh, to, for having a good partnership. It's very important to have freedom and trust uh, because you are ju you just embrace uh, something new. Because you, um, uh, the world is very. Uh, were in you and you should uh, think out of the box uh, for example let's uh, look at the foundation of presidential grants uh, uh, here this foundation gives uh, a lot of freedom and you can uh, uh, change a lot in your projects uh, you can uh, break the rules um, and then we understand uh, the result in the end and then we can see that social effects uh, can be found not where we planned to do this where the program started but we can see it uh, somewhere else Thank you, Dasha. So here I've heard uh, uh, some new things. Um and uh, partnerships, uh, of course, uh, mean always uh, freedom and trust. Uh, and uh, also, uh, I like uh, this honest evaluation of what's happening. The result, uh, uh, social result, uh, is important. Uh, it's important uh, to know. Svetlana, would you like also to join us? Um, yes, I would like to join the discussion. Not all is partnership is partnership. Very often, uh, there are uh, such uh, mutual, uh, um, you know, uh, attitudes where there are, there are uh, beneficiaries and donors, uh, uh, so different types um, of roles. And this is already maybe, uh, I don't know whether it's partnership or not. But uh, usually there are two sides, um, uh, they cooperate and they get something like uh, something more um, you know this is like exchange uh, and we try to reach something new maybe competencies maybe new vision maybe some other uh, some other things maybe general knowledge uh, and here I like this uh, word um, cooperation co-creativity uh, you know uh, complicity one year ago when I was at the international conference uh, they spoke so much about cooperation co-creativity complicity so working together and it doesn't matter in what role but it's very important for what you do this and when you have this goal which uh, uh, to combine you around this goal you can find your own reserves uh, to reach it the goal can be different uh, well-being of people development of this area it can be big or small but uh, this goal is some kind of vector which uh, is uh, important uh, and uh, Values uh, are important. Goal and values are important. Yes, I agree with you, Svetlana, for this uh, comment. Dear colleagues, now from the audience, you are all listening to us. Uh, I would like to know your opinion. Uh, what are differences uh, from uh, of, of a partnership with non-profit organizations to reach uh, sustainable social changes? Because um, our colleagues mentioned a lot, uh, but. Uh, now we don't see really any difference. Uh, we, we can see differences. Uh, for example, it should be long term, uh, trust, freedom, and so on. What else can we add? Raise your hands. First. 
but please be short. I am from the lab of social creative and inclusion in Moscow. I would like to focus uh, on criteria uh, which uh, exist for people. For example, a person made the project and he um, earned some money, he became successful. And I remember uh, speech at that uh, and uh, this competence, um, this competition in money, it's not fair. People, business people, they earn much more than non-profit organizations. But but uh, personal uh, glory uh, should be, uh, you know, similar uh, to um, success uh, of the project. There should be, uh, you know, um, inside of the partnership, you mean, uh, that both sides uh, should uh, admit um, whose credit it is. I speak about personal uh, accomplishment. For example, Mr. Ivanov made um, this, um, did this, um, I don't know whether it's in, inside the partnership or outside, but as, for example, some people, some partnership who were, uh, you know, receivers uh, of this. Uh, now, my, now people, uh, they go out from business uh, because uh, they, uh, because it's boring for them. Uh, they need creativity, they need some creative work, and they're searching for partners also. Uh, searching for partners uh, to create together. Um, creativity is important. Okay, I think um, we have some other questions or comments. Uh, Mikhail Marina, as, uh, so, um, at the Institute of Social um, Initiatives, the main condition of partnership um, is, um, uh, you know, the same values. But if, um, um, you know, you want the same values, uh, it is important both parties should voice these voices uh, honestly and uh, they should not um, you know speak about very great goals um, you know um, but then uh, don't uh, it, it means uh, that uh, really they don't uh, want it uh, you know uh, so uh, business uh, goals uh, should be also um, in line uh, with this. We have to speak about long-term partnership uh, when we are honest about goals and uh, when both partners um, look at each other as equal partners. Because uh, even now, um, uh, attitude to non-profit organization is like this. You have to do this because you have to do this. Because you like social work and that's why you started to do this. We want uh, by, by, uh, so we want to uh, pay you money um, because uh, you like uh, this uh, to do. That's all. Uh, we save the world. Uh, we're saving the world uh, and uh, give us money because you have so much. For example, we speak to business uh, party. And it's also not right. So all both parties should be honest and understand each other and also understand the restrictions and the uh, possibilities of each other. And when they agree upon uh, goals, maybe not saving of, hum of uh, uh, humankind, but then still some maybe more precise goals. Okay, now we have uh, in another part of our audience, we have another question and also a gentleman nearby also has a question. Okay, tell me please, uh, if for example, uh, is um, he um, uh, a list uh, of some uh, activities, because you all speak about creativity a lot, you speak about it, so is he a list of uh, some activities um, which could uh, really um, concern this social activity, social things, or is it only the start of the process? Because it's very important uh, to join something interesting, because um, you uh, speak so nicely, uh, but still uh, all these directions, uh, uh, activities uh, should be uh, focused on, um, and we need, and also this uh, collective creativity is important, of course, we should also join it maybe. Okay, this was a very good comment, uh, but I think uh, that, um, you know, in each partnership, uh, uh, in each partnership it's different uh, and uh, it's uh, going endlessly. And uh, very importantly, we need uh, to have a good uh, proper formats. 
and venues where it can happen um, and also let's come back um, so the comment um, about long term, -term um, efficient uh, relations i i uh, my name is artur uh, so um, uh, cultural uh, capital foundation uh, so that's like a topic uh, for discussion maybe do you have any um, uh, tips and, and tricks, uh, secrets uh, um, to build up um, relationships between business and non-profit organizations? What is interesting for business? Uh, Yes, of course, there are a lot of secrets, uh, but maybe this is not the topic of our discussion today, because now we speak about quite special and complicated and unique uh, thing uh, as partnership uh, uh, to for rich and uh, sustainable um, social results. Uh, and we can see some examples uh, here on our stage, on our panel. Okay, speaking about partnership, building up partnership in general, there are a lot of manuals, books, uh, courses, people who can share the experience. Uh, and also, uh, we, have, uh, we, uh, we have had a lot of sessions at this forum. You can also then have uh, this online. Okay, speaking about business, um, goals, uh, values, uh, this is uh, like the foundation uh, which uh, should be um, understandable between both parties. We should be agreeing the, uh, um, between, um, you know, different parties. Uh, the agenda should be the same for business and non-profit organizations. And also this agenda uh, also can be formed together. And I think Narvisky uh, Nickel Company is one of the examples. Um, of the companies uh, which really did it, but maybe this is separate. Uh, we uh, have uh, colleagues from different companies, different cities, uh, and now if there, if there are no other comments, so okay, there is one more comment. Um, Good afternoon, Vesnikova Olga, Yakutia, the Foundation uh, Family for Kids. Uh, let's uh, start with um, uh, a particular example. We have partnerships, we uh, work together with our national bank, uh, and we uh, detected a social problem, social adaptation of uh, uh, those uh, who uh, graduate uh, from orphanages. Uh, and uh, we have our social project. Uh, uh, and all this um, um, uh, then le led um, uh, to corporate volunteering uh, and now we have mentors. The chairman of management of the bank uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, a mentor uh, to three orphans. Uh, and um, uh, his wife uh, is a mentor uh, to two orphans. Uh, what does it mean for these uh, orphans? Uh, this means employment, uh, uh, good friends, uh, and education. About 50 employees of our bank uh, are also mentors uh, for orphans. Uh, this is our good case. Uh, OK, uh, oh, did you influence on other companies? Did they join your program? And um, do you have some real changes? Uh Yes, uh, we have one example, one of the event. This is Quest Games and summer hi hikes uh, with uh, boating. Uh, so we have um, the company Saha Nefti Zbet and um, they became our partners. Um, so Saha Nefti Gas Bit uh, company also became our official uh, partner and will have this, uh, um, you know, uh, boating uh, uh, trips uh, together with this um, company. And last year also we opened a mentor center for uh, orphans. Um, and now these graduates from orphanages, they come to us uh, and Almas Bank uh, also rents um, this building and also uh, I think uh, that's a very good example and now the last comment and we'll proceed 
I would like to clarify something that has already been said. Yes, it's true, we should articulate our values and goals, and they have to be true values and true objectives and goals. So we have to be honest, but sometimes we don't understand the language um, that we use. For example, I uh, was at the previous uh, section and uh, we talked. Uh, they talked a lot about professionalism of non-profit organizations, but sometimes they are more professional than business uh, um, people. But sometimes business organizations don't understand how professional people. Like if uh, business understood uh, m uh, my uh, position, uh, what I sell, uh, you know, like I sell air because I sell social uh, um, projects so maybe I'm a better seller than business people uh, so it's also about language what we understand and uh, professionalism this is what's important for partnerships thank you for this uh, remark and I actually identified another component, uh, self-criticism, because I uh, can feel that, uh, uh, you know, we shouldn't uh, forget about tandem. Um, you know, the bicycle won't, uh, you won't be able to ride a bicycle if uh, uh, everybody is uh, turning wheels in opposite direction. So you have to agree on what you're going to do together. Yeah, I actually wanted to mention something about professionalism. Uh, uh, Mita Lishkovsky used fundraising and he did a survey uh, and he asked uh, the question to non-profit organizations, uh, how do you evaluate the work of your organization? And we can say good, uh, excellent, uh, there's a space uh, to, for growth. Uh, well, it's good, but my question was how, that is, what instruments uh, you use? And everybody began to laugh. So, like, uh, when uh, they hear the question, how do you evaluate, they say, oh, oh Okay, it's, it's, it's doing good, it's uh, going well uh, without um, looking into details. So maybe we should uh, move to more practical tools. And it's not a trivial thing, you know, we um, measure uh, all the uh, results uh, using OBG. So we're trying to scale the program for the whole city. So. Uh, we want uh, to um, launch a program similar to the program uh, which exists here in Moscow aimed at longevity and uh, all the generations. So we have to be aware of these things uh, and of the changes. Uh, yes, uh, uh, the changes are continuous. Uh, and uh, there are so many things to learn from each other. So the difference in these roles uh, is obvious and it's normal. Sometimes uh, as a non-profit organization, you don't know how it works. So you come to business and say it uh, openly, I don't know. Uh, I can give you another example. One big foundation uh, went to a company to get, to, uh, let's say, one million. Uh, 100 million so they had a meeting with the CEO and so he asked them about the strategy so first he said you should have a meeting with the director for strategic planning he will help you to improve your strategy and only afterwards I'll be willing to give you 100 million to implement this long-term program and I think it's normal well I can't say that it's normal um, it's uh, an ideal situation we would love this situation uh, to uh, happen uh, uh, because it would be good uh, to uh have such a business-like attitude. But, you know, uh, getting back to your question, how do you assess your uh, work as a non-profit organization? Yes, of course, you can say uh, good uh, things, but maybe you should have uh, 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 formulated your question differently, because it's about wording. You know, uh, you should focus more on the language, on the wording, so you can see different things from different angles. For example, the partnership is about uh, joining efforts. So you, you are good at this thing, you are good at that thing. So we should um, uh, pull uh, the company uh, so that we could understand how we could complement each other, what we can add to each other's expertise. 
so this is uh, what partnership means. And now I would like to move uh, to the uh, representatives of business organizations because uh, it's great uh, that your foundation is an intermediary between business uh, and uh, non-profit organizations. So you're welcome. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Yes, I represent uh, um, IFK Sistema a company. We are a big donor for many non-profit organizations. I uh, was listening uh, to other speakers, and um, I can say that there are certain things uh, that we can see in our work. I think that... Uh, you can't hear me well, right? Maybe I should give you my microphone. Sorry. I'll try to speak up, uh, but I have a coarse voice. So, speaking about the tandem and the partnership between nonprofit and business, uh, uh, you know, we, there are four uh, crucial components uh, the state, society, nonprofit organizations, and business. So, uh, for example, I would like to give you an example of um, uh, searching for lost people. So whenever we try to uh, identify who is the key player, who uh, is the leader, uh, the state, uh, uh, the, uh, or the authority, uh, business organization, non-profit organization, or society, because, for example, we have a big project, ODC project, and we search uh, lost people. So it uh, was initiated by non-profit organization. So they uh, try to approach everyone, um, and no. Be, uh, neither our company, no Beeline or other telecom company had uh, uh, similar projects related to searching for lost people. Um, and uh, so uh, I remember that conference uh, uh, when we discussed uh, this. So we should not under, under value uh, the organizations, non-profit organizations that can really uh, come up with the initiatives and make business uh, uh, partner with them and take part in their projects. Now, next uh, question is about competences. Who can resolve uh, these uh, issues? But I can say that our mutual work enriched our work because uh, they invited and involved people from business organization that uh, became uh, the members of uh, the teams that were looking for people. We uh, rely on non-profit organization expertise. We trust them. And the same is true about humanitarian aid. We do collaborate with all the non-profit organizations. It's not that we think that we know better. Uh, you know, non-profit organizations uh, have their own uh, uh, expertise, and uh, um, it's been um, developing for many years so it's great that you uh, can uh, uh, share your knowledge with us and we can le learn a lot from you uh, so we are speaking about partnership so we're trying to develop a list of criteria but it doesn't work every time so what are the reasons uh, of uh, failures so why is it that some partnerships don't really work? So what, uh, why do we have these failures if we think about long-term work? Uh, well, you know, we even though we are partners and we signed an agreement, we uh, exist in different uh, dimensions. We have a different financial situation. We have different teams uh, uh, working. Uh, so it might take us a longer time uh, uh, to implement the strategy. Sometimes uh, non-profit organization can have delays. They can stop their work and uh, they can um, no longer have funding for 
some time. For example, we provide funding for some time, and then uh, um, I remember that at some point uh, other, some other organizations stopped their funding, so it could uh, create a problem. Then the priorities might change, and uh, the program structure might change as a result. So consequently, business uh, begins to move in different directions, so non-profit organization no longer uh, can participate in such programs, so uh, we have uh, to say, yeah, f we have to bid farewell, uh, but uh, we uh, might stop funding, but we try to sustain partnership. And the third uh, story that comes to my mind, and somebody already mentioned it, it's uh, true that we have to be honest. We have to be very open about what we want from this work. And sometimes we want a long-term partnership, but non-profit organization takes it as a one-off activity. And then we realize we need more resources. And uh, uh, so we, we can see that uh, the partnership cannot uh, become a long-term Term, uh, partner and uh, it's uh, true we have to understand uh, uh, the uh, demand of our beneficiaries because we thought that there was a very high demand of our beneficiaries we invested a lot but then uh, we found out that uh, this demand wasn't really that high thank you Anna now let me move on to Svetlana so maybe it's the other side now that we're trying to analyze uh, uh, what prevents partnerships from being sustainable, from uh, addressing uh, and uh, in introducing social changing. I would say trust. And uh, I mean trust uh, not between a, a business company and a non-profit organization, but uh, more from the authorities' uh, point of view. because. Uh, sometimes the authorities find it unrealistic uh, w what you suggest doing. So it takes time to prove that uh, you are serious about your initiative, that you are willing to invest resources, and you are keen on making first steps to launch some education initiatives. Uh, once potential participants understand that this is uh, um, uh, something we need, then they become uh, uh, interested and get involved. For example, uh, Norilsk Nickel, uh, uh, the administration of the city and Potanin's foundation decided to set up this uh, um, uh, project uh, uh, to develop uh, the city, to develop uh, the uh, economy. And uh, the non-profit organization had to become a catalyst of development because they had to involve uh, uh, the public at large. So we thought uh, it was such an important uh, thing that we were doing. And then we were really surprised that our potential partners were not that willing because uh, they wanted to wait and see because it was a completely new thing. So, uh, you know, it was uh, uh, on the level of general vision. So we decided to have more meetings to uh, develop foresight, to start developing the tourist cluster. And this was about land use and many other issues that could never be tackled by one organization. Uh, whereas if we united our uh, efforts and resources, we could do something. So different organizations began to take part in creating this broad vision and in developing a plan for the long-term project. So that was important for our collaboration. Would you like to add something? Andre, sorry, yeah, you can add what you want. We sometimes work with non-profit organizations as donors. And we can see uh, the problem uh, 
the inability to explain and describe positive effects of the project. For example, sometimes we can support a project for a year or several years, and we know all the activities, but we can never see whether they reach the desired effect. So that's cre that creates a pro problem, because we don't understand why it uh, uh, happens and whether the funding helps us to solve our problems. So the inability to formulate a social effect, the inability to develop a system of measuring social effect uh, that the uh, project uh, can produce so that we could see that the project uh, was delivered uh, productively and it wasn't in vain. I guess uh, it's uh, uh, common for many other countries as well. As well, yeah. Uh, but uh, it's important to do certain things, uh, and they are not difficult. I'm sure that uh, people that work in the sector for a long time understand what I mean. Uh, and I can add uh, about uh, something about social effect because social effect can uh, produce positive effect for businesses because our finance uh, uh, spe finance specialists uh, uh, can uh, uh, make calculations uh, and uh, can uh, uh, see how the program uh, uh, affected uh, so what kind of return you can have as business uh, what kind of benefits it brought to the business. Uh, you know, for example, uh, my colleagues ask me, so we will invest in this program and then what? You have to wait uh, for 10 years, uh, wait and see. No, but it's uh, impossible. Uh, uh, you know, there are certain parameters that uh, have to be taken into account, but sometimes it's very difficult uh, to uh, identify uh, uh, all the figures. Uh, so what do you say? What do you do in this uh, case, uh, like somebody said, I sell air. So I'm trying to show the effect of social activity, how the sh different social activity can influence different uh, financial indicators, for example. I can describe if you want. Yeah, just as an as a illustration uh, so that you could uh, help us to understand why business needed. The regional uh, policies of the company uh, is aimed at improving life quality in the cities where the companies uh, are available. For example, our uh, cities that are located outside of the polar circle do not have enough people, so we recruit people from other uh, places, so Norilsk, Mochegorsk, Chita, uh, people are considering carefully whether they, they want to go there to work or not. So the quality of the urban environment and the quality of life is part of our job proposal. And this is uh, uh, what a person relies while making decision whether they want to work there or not. Of course, uh, uh, for business it means uh, labor force, uh, um, uh, quality of uh, labor, uh, their competences. So. Um, we identify the qualities that we need uh, um uh, and uh, so we have to understand what we can provide to our staff members in order to be competitive. And uh, thus uh, we make connection between uh, uh, our uh, expenses on charity. So I have uh, to uh, describe this uh, to the investors. Uh, uh, yeah, there are different um, uh, projects and uh, social project. Yes, I uh, always uh, uh, describe volunteering and the opportunity to take part in volunteering work actually gets uh, people connected to this place. So young people are not willing to leave the city and uh, go somewhere else. And it creates a feeling of happiness that affects uh, the productiveness of uh, labor. And this is already, uh, uh, and this involves certain figures. Yeah, we, you can really uh, measure happiness. Uh, 
especially in case of uh, mid-range enterprises, but uh, um, we probably have to measure sustainable social changes in order to get all the figures. It's uh, quite a new subject for us. But in the whole world, uh, it's been going on for the recent decades, uh, and uh, business organizations and uh, non-profit organizations uh, are developing different programs, different formats of uh, collaboration. And now I would like to ask Dan to share his experience when you worked with non-profit uh, organizations and businesses uh, and non-profit non organizations in the first place. So what are the key competences in today's world uh, that the non-profit organization should have so that they were ready to have a partnership to make social changes? Um, thank you very much. It's a wonderful, wonderful discussion. So let's, uh, let's talk about nonprofit organizations first and then talk about businesses and corporations. And, and um, you know, I think everything that's been spoken about here is, is important. The conversation about values, share, shared values, aligned values is really important. But let's take the conversation up another level, right? And let's, let's look at what is, it, what is it that we actually want to achieve. We have these massive social problems, whether it's in Russia or whether it's in the United States or whether it's in the UK. We have massive problems of poverty, uh, problems with suicide, breast cancer, child hunger, orphans. We have these massive problems. And at the end of the day, we want to solve these problems. That's why we're all here. That's all why, why we're dedicating our time to these kinds of discussions. And the trouble is that the social problems are massive in scale and the nonprofit organizations are really miniature. So I think the, the larger discussion we have to be having is how can nonprofits and businesses work together to scale everything up to the size that we need to actually solve these problems. So on the nonprofit side of things, I think the important question is, is impact and goals. What impact is it that you intend to have in the world? And by when do you intend to have that impact? You know, I don't, I don't know about Russia, but in the United States, for a long time, charities have survived and have grown by making people feel guilty. You know, the, the children are, the, these children live in poverty, you have to help them. These people with disease are hurting, you have to help them. And I think we have to move from guilt to results. These children are hungry. Here's what we intend to do to help them, and here's the date by which we will do that. These people are suffering from breast cancer. Here's the date by which we intend to find a cure for breast cancer. And, and along with those goals, how are we going to measure the impact we're having toward those goals, which is, which is some of what the discussion has been here. In the, in the past, before a company or a person wanted to get involved with a charity, they wanted to know how much of the money is going to the actual cause, right? I want to know that very little money is going to the, to the executives and very little money is going to overhead and a lot of the money is going to the people. Well, you could have a, you could have a soup kitchen and you could have a lot of money going to soup, but that doesn't mean that the soup is any good, right? So that's the wrong question. The question that you want to ask is what impact is all that money having on those people and how do you measure that impact? How do you measure the improvement and the quality of their lives? And if you measure it, who do you have analyzing those measurements and do you change your behavior based on what you're learning from those measurements, okay? So that's the first thing on the nonprofit side. What impact do you intend to have? As an example, there's an organization called Sight Savers in the UK, and um, they're committed to ending trachoma, which is this ancient disease which causes blindness, mostly in developing countries. They're committed to ending trachoma in 80% of the countries in which it is endemic in the next five years, and the remaining 20% of countries in the five years following that. Now that's a big, audacious goal for impact. That can be measured, right? Or there's an organization in the, in the United States called No Kid Hungry. Their goal is to end child hunger in America within the next five years. Very specific dates to which they can be held accountable. 
Now that's, uh, that's a kind of an audacious goal that a business can get really excited about being associated with. And, and you're being really transparent from the outset about the fact that you have a re we have a really big goal. So if you want to partner with us, you better be ready to come along on a really, really big goal. Now on the business side of things, how do, how do businesses make a difference in the world? Well, first of all, a business can make a difference by, by not doing bad things, right? Like don't pollute the environment and don't treat your workers terribly. Okay, that's easy. Don't do really bad things. The second way a business can make a difference in the world is don't make terrible products and services. You know, don't, don't make a, you know, you get a family, a middle income family, and they buy a, they save up their money to buy a computer for their son. And the computer doesn't work. Well, that's the opposite of social good. You know, you want to do social good, make products that are worth the money people pay for them, number one. Before you start to get involved with charity at all, stop making products that suck, okay? Then, are you innovating in your own business? Are you moving humanity forward in your own business? Like if you look at Apple, right? Look at the difference that the iPhone is making in the lives of the blind. That's social good right there without any involvement with a nonprofit organization. Look at the difference that the iPad is making in education. That's a huge difference. That's huge social good without any involvement with a nonprofit organization. So are you innovating? Don't do bad things. Don't make products that suck. Innovate in the area in which you have expertise. Now let's move on to the conversation of nonprofits. You want to help a nonprofit organization. You want to get involved in social good in that way. What can you do? Well, First of all, a lot of corporations like to send volunteers to charity, and that's wonderful. You know, that's great, but it's not enough. Imagine if I went to Coca-Cola, or if I went to one of the big Russian oil companies, or one of the big Russian auto manufacturers, and I said, I really want to help you. I'm going to bring you a lot of volunteers. That's not, right? That's not what they need. But that's how we think about nonprofits. I'm going to bring you volunteers. How can you really help? Number one, change your thinking about the way nonprofits ought to operate. Change your thinking about the restrictions that you place on nonprofits. Give nonprofits the same freedoms to pay people and attract the best people and take risks as we give to business. Number two, use your capital. What do businesses have? Businesses have capital and they have marketing capability, right? So if we're talking about scaling things, if we're talking about scaling the solving of social problems in Russia, then we need to scale the size of philanthropy. Okay, in the US, because it's been around a long time, giving is about $400 billion a year. In Russia, it's about $7 billion a year, right? So, so we need philanthropy to really grow in Russia. Interestingly, in the United States, about 75% of giving comes from individuals, comes from average citizens. In Russia, it's about the same. About 70% of giving comes from individuals, doesn't actually come from, from businesses, although more money comes from businesses in Russia than in the United States. So if you're going to scale philanthropy in Russia, you have to scale citizen giving in Russia. Now that's something businesses can help with. Businesses can use their capital to help nonprofit organizations scale citizen philanthropy. I'll give you an example. We created in the United States, my company created a program called the Breast Cancer Three Day Walks. And they were for breast cancer. And they were these long walks. They were 60 miles long. And they happened over the course of three days. So you walk for three days, 20 miles a day. Every night you slept in a tent and you had to raise at least uh, $1,500 in order to do it. Now to launch a breast cancer three day, say in New York, that's like starting a business. Let's say you're going to start a bakery. You're going to open a bakery, right? You're going to have to rent a space. You're going to have to buy ovens. 
you're going to have to buy equipment, you're going to have to pay employees, you're going to have to advertise, you're going to have to market, you're going to have to buy furniture for the bakery, you're going to have to buy a cash register. You're going to spend a lot of money before you sell a single loaf of bread. You know, you might spend three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars to get that bakery set up. Where's that money going to come from? You haven't sold any bread yet. Well, it comes from a source of capital, right? You go to a bank, you say, I need five hundred thousand dollars to buy all this stuff so that I can open my bakery. Once I open the bakery, people will start buying bread and then I can pay you back the five hundred thousand dollars. Well, launching a charitable fundraising endeavor is the same thing. So we're going to start the breast cancer three day. We're going to open an office. We're going to hire a bunch of staff. We're going to take out big ads in the New York Times. We're going to take out television ads, radio ads, so that we can recruit people to walk. That's going to cost a lot of money. So we went to um, the Avon Cosmetics Company. Do you, have you, how many of you guys have heard of Avon? Yeah. You know, the Avon lady, and they sell lipstick and makeup and stuff. So we went to them, and we said, we have this idea. We want to launch this breast cancer three-day walk. We want to launch it in Los Angeles, California. We need $500,000 in loans, in loans, in debt from you to get this started. If you do that, if you loan us that money, we will call it the Avon breast cancer three-day walk so that all of the consumers and all the general public know that Avon is putting this on. And... Whatever money it raises, we will give that to you, to your nonprofit foundation, so that Avon can give money to breast cancer organizations. So we did that. That first event netted, after all expenses, it netted $4 million, even after we paid back the half million dollars. Avon got $4 million to give away for breast cancer. So we said to them the next year, we want to go to four cities. And that means we need $500,000 times four cities, $2 million. They did it. It worked. We raised, we netted about $16 million. Well, five years later, we were doing breast cancer three days in 13 cities. Avon was putting up about $7 million a year in loans so that we could uh, finance the negative cash flow in all of those cities. The breast cancer three days netted $200 million for breast cancer in just five years. And just more money raised more quickly for breast cancer than any events ever in the United States, all on the basis of Avon providing us the capital to grow. We had the idea, we had the talent, we had the know-how, but we didn't have the capital to launch it. And large businesses have large sources of capital. They can use those capital to, cre to create fundraising initiatives, marketing initiatives, major gift phil philanthropic initiatives that raise the level of citizen philanthropy beyond anything a corporation could do. I mean, $200 million to breast cancer in five years from citizens. There's no company that would ever have put up $200 million for breast cancer over the course of five years. But by them putting up loans, they were able to help us create something that created that kind of money. So I think those are the biggest ways that businesses and nonprofits can partner together. Have a big dream, have a big goal. Take a look at the big picture from high up. We wanna make big things. How can we make big things together? with capital and the know-how of non-profit organizations. Wow. 200 million, of course, is very I think to 100 million, uh, this is great, a great amount of money. And thank you very much uh, for this focus uh, on this, that business uh, can, uh, um, you know, allow us uh, to scale up um, and also to transfer our um, uh, you know our activities into different uh, uh, so thin uh, so and here we can uh, speak uh, about the big uh, uh, projects of course as you've mentioned and also you said uh, about what business uh, uh, can give to you maybe what about non-profit organization how can we uh, grow from asking from begging uh, then um, uh, to this um, uh, inside feeling that we're equal partners with business uh, uh, and how can we achieve this from beggars to partners. Yeah.
that's really important and we um, we all I think your, your professionalism and and your belief in yourself you know you've you've that's a psychological thing <laughs> it is you know you've got to you've got to get rid of this idea you got to let go of this idea that businesses are really smart and I'm really stupid businesses are really capable and I'm I'm really not you just you just have to let go of those ideas and you have to start to dream as big as businesses be, as, as big as businesses dream. If you look at someone like, you take Elon Musk, right? Does everybody know who Elon Musk is? You know who Elon Musk is? I mean, this is a young guy, right? He dreams he's going to take on the, the big American automobile makers. He's going to take them on. And he's going to build a company that's going to be as big as any of the big U.S. automakers. And while he's doing it, he's going to build a company to send spaceships to the moon. You know, I mean, this guy is dreaming big. Well, we have big problems in this world. We have hunger and we have disease and we have illiteracy and we have poverty. Why should we be thinking small about them? You know, we have to start dreaming as big as corporations are dreaming about, about dominating the world. And if we start dreaming big, then we start thinking about the strategies we need to implement to make those big dreams come true. Otherwise, if we're thinking small all the time, then our strategies are always small. And the difference that we're going to make is always going to be small. And the, our ability to inspire is always going to be small. Спасибо большое за вот этот вот, мне кажется, очень важный посыл как раз. I think this is a very important message and uh, it leads to our next question. So colleagues, how can we think big in Russia? Okay, how can we achieve it in Russia? So what can we have um, as representatives of business and non-profit organizations? What can be in our ecosystem that can help us, uh, that we can go, go really to space, so to say, to formulate uh, our um, decisions? How can we look for partners in this direction? Who is ready? Andrew? Okay, so, um, you know, maybe I'm a hammer and uh, you are nails, but uh, still uh, here maybe education is a background. We do trainings for non-profit organizations, for social entrepreneurs. And you can see dynamics um, within uh, three, four hours even. A person really can think big uh, and can um, think, um, you know, in big picture, in a big picture. And then uh, he uh, can already think about uh, some precise um, tasks. Yes, we can think big. Uh, Yes, we can treat it, so to say, but uh, with the help of training. Um, it, as Dan said, um, this is psychological, and um, you just um, cope with it. Maybe even, and maybe both parties should cope with it. Not only profit organizations, uh, but uh, also um, business should cope, uh, you know, and should change attitude also. Uh, yes, and I think we should expand these programs uh, of training and f uh, everybody can be um, a game changer, you know, and those who really are game changers, so they do this uh, really um, in a big, in a, in a quite uh, big way. Okay, education programs which can really uh, help you to uh, dream big. What else? I think uh, that we can um, speak about um, uh, some uh, people, pers uh, some people. Uh, so where can we get trust? Uh, trust uh, can uh, um, uh, only be between people. Um, organizations are not stable, they change, but if you charge a person and the person is mobile, now he is an employee of non-profit organizations and uh, tomorrow he will be in a state, bar in a state uh, uh, company. But if it's uh, really a person who is big, uh, it will lead um, to changes. Um, and how to treat, to think big, uh, how to dream big. Our, so we have a strategy for 10 years. Uh, and we, um, so businessmen, when we say about this, uh, you know, they say uh, you are crazy because 10 year plan is uh, too much. But what about, what about the idea? So the first um, idea is, uh, this is personal strategy. If people in the country 
have uh, the uh, plan only for two months, uh, 46 uh, people only planned for two months. Uh, so Levada Center research uh, showed this. Uh, and it's important to start uh, from personal strategy of bosses. It's important um, to think about uh, people who work uh, in non-profit organizations. I think uh, Dan also spoke at that, uh, and he spoke um, about um, uh, the companies. Uh, you uh, choose not abstract organizations, but specific teams. <coughs> and non-profit organizations also have uh, has a lot of values, and this is a stable thing. And also, as a conclusion, I want to say that in Skolkova, one of the professors mentioned there is an abbreviation uh, chief executive officer, and now it's, uh, uh, it can be, um, uh, you know, um, uh, set um, as a chief uh, energy officer, not chief executive. Uh, so uh, uh, people who have, who have energy, who have ideas, yes, there are recipes, you can treat this, but sometimes uh, there are situations that it's much more expensive uh, uh, to treat this uh, then just to choose the right team and sometimes um, people come to non-profit organizations just to, to look at these people who have energy uh, who have uh, drive uh, who think big um, uh, who dream big um, and the people um, you know these people are very interesting they are uh, so these people um, you know like some adventure for example even Anna Yes, I, I agree with this um, idea that the volume of social project uh, uh, is quite uh, big and uh, sometimes you cannot uh, have this on the shoulders of non-profit organizations. Uh, but I can add that um, uh, continuous uh, training is uh, very important uh, and we should do this all the time. And also the management of these non-profit organizations should do. Business uh, should be developed. Um, it should have best practices um, in international, Russian, much quicker than non-profit organizations. And this checking behind uh, can become noticeable in some time. And you feel it when you partner with business. And this issue can be solved also uh, with the new people uh, into the sector. And this is also important because a lot of non-profit organizations, they are quite conservative. And we know the teams which work, uh, but when we speak about digital technologies, about new directions, uh, also in the area uh, of social innovations, uh, here the, we need people, and uh, these people also sometimes come from different industries. And now everybody says about digital transformation in the center. And uh, so this is the year of digital transformation. Many people from technological background work in non-profit organizations uh, and we all know the answer to this question but this is like uh, new people uh, with new thinking new practices uh, and then uh, also they will help you to improve your work um, so you have to um, attract new people to non-profit organizations and together with business you have to study what uh, they know and they are quick in this Natalia, uh, so these words um, which uh, we heard uh, in the course of this discussion, scale, dream big, long-term partnerships, uh, I think uh, I think we all do this in Kalomna region near Moscow, and uh, uh, so as a result, our partners. Um, so our partners and uh, us, we go to other forms of work and uh, we um, start uh, to invent technologies of work in this particular area. And now in work we have the project uh, with the support of Mr. Padanin, uh, the column. In Kolomna we have the uh, social innovation, um, you know, project and also now um, we have uh, the cultural franchise so called and uh, we also like it um, we uh, don't uh, we are not beggars also we also offer something uh, and if uh, this is something new and people feel that uh, uh, you know that can join uh, this something very useful they also uh, start new projects um, 
Окей, so Светлана, what can you say? Uh, I'm sure that people should have, uh, uh, you know, um, bright eyes, um, and um, uh, these uh, ideas um, should should uh, um, be uh, important. But energy, uh, so this enthusiasm should be uh, very important. Enthusiasm of people. Okay, great. It's uh, good to dream big. So my question is for everyone now. So if we have already an institutional system, what do we miss, what do we lack uh, for uh, social changes? Uh, if you could be brief, I uh, would be grateful. I'm a sociologist. My name is Ivan Zolotovitsky. I developed a special technique, uh, the network uh, or the chain of events. Uh, you know, we have uh, to make a comprehensive system. So let's say a person got lost or disappeared. So you have to publish this information in the system. And then somebody can develop a plan and then get resources afterwards. So uh, yeah, it would be uh, easier to find uh, the people who could help uh, you uh, if we had this common system. I wanted to get back to my point. It's very important to elaborate. Uh, uh, so um, we uh, heard our um, uh, colleague from the U.S. and of course they tackle great uh, uh, problems, big, uh, big problems. We are dealing with smaller ones. For example, let's take uh, children's camps uh, during holiday season. Uh, could you help uh, something there? For example, could you ch help to change the atmosphere, the environment? Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, there are so many things to do uh, in playful form uh, or in the form of education uh, tutorials. Uh, Oh, we have a lot of joint uh, projects, and actually they have been already institutionalized. But it would be good if everybody knew about it, because we are not aware of them. Yeah. Hello, I represent Russian Red Cross, and I would like to say that marketing departments of large companies, business uh, uh, companies that are both uh, middle and uh, large companies um, are working in isolation. They are encapsulated in their own uh, uh, companies. We don't have uh, enough uh, publicity. For example, we got a grant uh, and we did a lot of work and then we continued our work without grants. We began to have negotiations uh, with businesses. We have uh, uh, donors uh, uh, that give their Blood, but they don't uh, have enough respect. Uh, maybe we could think about some uh, discounts, some benefits to these people. And it would be good if we uh, uh, had uh, uh, some interaction. We called uh, uh, hundreds of companies, and nobody was willing to do anything. They were not interested in anything, just because their marketing department is too focused on their own work. So no matter no matter how much uh, uh, you say uh, that businesses are open, it's not true. Because I was uh, uh, doing fundraising uh, um, for a year for this movement, Your Dorno, and I know it from my experience. Uh, of course, uh, we should go from both directions, uh, both non-profit organizations and business organizations. Uh, what that gentleman just said. You know, when we were looking for a partner for the, for the breast cancer three days, well, we, we wrote to over a hundred companies. No, 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 no. But eventually, you only need one yes. <laughs> you only need one yes. So you just keep at it till you find your yes. Now, marketing is a, I said, I talked about capital, that companies can provide capital to help build things that can build citizen philanthropy. Marketing is another thing that corporations can provide because they have big marketing budgets. And, um, and if you have a message about social good in your marketing, 
it brings more love to your brand than if you just have a message about your product. So we ran all kinds of ads for the breast cancer three days, big television ads, big newspaper ads, and they all had the Avon name in them, you know, the Avon breast cancer three day. Well, that brought a lot of love to Avon as a business because consumers saw that business doing something big about it's breast cancer. Yeah. So it's, it's very symbiotic, you know. Спасибо большое, Дэн. Спасибо. Я, к сожалению, вынуждена заканчивать наш разговор. Thank you very much, but I have to wrap it up because we're running out of time. So I would like to share my dream. And uh, I would like to ask all the panelists to share your vision. So what kind of partnership projects you would like to hear on this stage uh, in a year's time? Uh, it's difficult because I'm the first. Uh, we already have such project because it's a long-term project and it's about looking for people that disappeared. We would like uh, uh, to resolve this uh, problem. And, uh, uh, you know, somebody raised uh, the question, who can uh, assess uh, the, uh, the project uh, ourselves, uh, also non-profit organizations as well as the community. So it would be good if we could uh, uh, sum it up uh, together. Andrei, what do you think? I uh, would like uh, to see the project in every city and this project could be about social entrepreneurship, how it could be done so that as many people as possible knew about it and how we could have a social impact, how it could be measured in order to prove that the project was successful and reached uh, its goals and objectives. So, uh, sometimes uh, people uh, uh, don't know uh, some things and they need support. Thank you. Uh, yes, I would like to continue this idea uh, because we're speaking now about ambitious uh, uh, projects, uh, daring projects. I would like uh, to see non-profit organizations uh, reaching the status of uh, social entrepreneurship uh, city because, uh, uh, for example, Kolomna could get the status of the, the city of uh, social entrepreneurship and uh, it would be great uh, because Russia doesn't have such city. So, uh, you know, you could get a book and read about uh, people that lead different projects, get good results in social area, uh, trying to see whether you could do something similar because it would be like a, a continuous exhibition of social projects yeah, and our um, foundation has already done a lot of work because uh, there are some social franchises so uh, it's quite easy to do Dasha, I'm standing for kind uh, cities um, uh, you know, we have uh, 2,382 uh, towns, so I would like uh, all of them to become kind cities so that uh, uh, most of population supported the local philanthropy uh, so that the companies uh, could support them. Um, we are speaking uh, about uh, two years term, yeah, uh, but I hope there'll be even more because the culture of uh, charity and the culture of philanthropy um, is very important to cultivate. So this is my dream, this energy of resources and uh, um, uh, work. Uh, I can say that uh, uh, the steel company in Cheripovets did a lot of work. They were developing uh, um, different areas of work uh, not necessarily uh, related to production sphere. And I hope that it could be done uh, uh, sooner than 20 years' time. Then, uh, what about you? Do you have such a beautiful dream? My, my big dream is to see nonprofit organizations dream big. And uh, to come back to Russia next year. Отлично. Спасибо. Ну что ж, дорогие друзья, на этой такой оптимистичной. Thank you very much, uh, dear friends. Uh, 
uh, we should close our panel on this positive uh, note so you can uh, uh, see the potential for growth you can involve partners that can uh, help you to scale it uh, and uh, you can uh, work more systematically and uh, you can get uh, more sustainable uh, and uh, this would be a partnership in the name of social uh, changes based on values uh, and uh, uh, we could uh, develop sustainable models so this is uh, uh, my uh, wish for you so I hope you will find the right partners and will resolve the problems that you face thank you very much thank you to all panelists